with that, the 2023 season comes to an end. Good night. Any go-kart is not only a ton of fun to drive around, but you can also attach a mop pad for it to double as a floor cleaner while your kid is driving it. This speed is easily adjustable and it's relatively quiet thanks to its soft rubber wheels. It's also lightweight for easy transportation and has a 6 liter hidden storage compartment. Hello Blair. Georgina? You don't sound like yourself. That's funny because I feel more like myself than ever. I don't think Jesus would approve of that. Well, you can tell Jesus that the bitch is fat. So many new followers that I just wanted to say, hey, if you're new here, welcome to Clean Talk. On this side of TikTok, you can find cleaning motivation, organization tips, crazy life hacks, and so much more. Here is where you'll find cleaning schedules to help keep you on track, ways to get organized and stay organized, how to get stains out of just about everything, and even some super cool mom hacks. So it really isn't hard to keep your home clean even if you have kids or pets. I get this question all the time, but ultimately all you need to do is clean 24 seven and be in a constant state of cleaning. And that is how you will be able to have a clean home 24 seven. That's the only real answer. So yeah, just keep on cleaning 24 seven. Two of spring cleaning, aka ripping my house apart, trying to find a parcel. There's been no organization whatsoever under my kitchen sink at all. So that was very nice to do. It might still look a mess, but it's an organized mess. I just need to get some more baskets. I then sorted out the food cupboard. Food had literally been out of date for like a year and a half. It was so bad, but you know, I'm so glad that it's all organized now and nice and neat. But I'm gonna have to do a part three to this. I'm trying borrow cleaning hacks to see whether they actually work and I'm gonna see if wiping oil on my bedside tables acts as a dust repellent. Oh my god, black bedside table shop, so much dust if you know you know. I'm mixing together olive oil, white vinegar, fairy liquid and some water. I think you can use any oil, probably not coconut oil because that's solid and you'd need to heat it up. You need to give it a good shake when it's in the bottle and then I got to work. It's been about three weeks since I've dusted these. I just used a kitchen paper, poured the mixture on and wiped it down. Now I'll have to wait and see how quickly the dust gathers. Here's some tips for a cleaner home in 2024. On the same color socks, this also goes for underwear, sheets, and towels as well, so it's easier to do the laundry, and if you lose a sock mate, they can team up and find each other. Try to adhere to the one-in, one-out rule for both your shoes and your clothes, and this will keep your closet in check. Make your bed every morning, and this will inspire you to keep the rest of your home clean and tidy as well. Instead of putting an item down, try putting it away immediately. Cookie! Sort through your junk mail and recycle it as soon as you get it so it doesn't pile up and turn into clutter. All right, if you're anything like me and you absolutely hate having a dirty home, especially dirty floors, I am about to give you the best advice ever. It's really not that hard to have and maintain a clean home that meets your standards. Um, there's just a few rules that you're going to have to learn to enforce in your life, and they're really not that hard, I promise. Um, basically, don't ever have a husband, don't have children, and don't have pets. And I know what you're thinking. Riley, I already have those things. That's fine. It is totally fine.
it is never too late to get rid of them. Um, no matter how much you love them, how cute and cuddly they are, it's okay. Staring at the blank page before you open up the dirty window. Let the sun illuminate the words that you cannot find. Reaching for something in the distance. So close you can almost taste it. Release your inhibitions. Feel the rain on your skin. No one else can feel it for you. Only you can let it in. No one else, no one else can speak the words on your lips. Treat yourself in words unspoken. Live your life with your eyes wide open. Today is where your book begins. Feel the rain on your Part one. I'm officially decided that I am not a clean everything in one day kind of girl. So I've broken my entire cleaning checklist into four sections, done over the course of four different days, and I've taken you with me throughout the entire process. Today we are starting with the kitchen, and as you can clearly see, it is a disaster. I'm actually prepping for fall decor right now, so things have gotten a little bit crazy around here. But back to the checklist. I feel like the beauty of this is that you can really tailor it to your weekly and daily routine. You can combine days if you end up getting busy. You can stretch things out beyond the four days if you have a little bit more flexibility but most importantly for me at least you sort of get rid of all those daunting all-in-one days on the weekends that take up hours of the day when you should be putting that time relaxing or out having fun that is a wrap for day one i will see you tomorrow for day two
This is one of my biggest decluttering projects that I've done so far. My goal for 2024 is to not have all of our junk everywhere and not have a lot of junk in our house, period. Every day that I get ready, I look at everything that we have and not being able to open our drawers is really driving me up the wall. I did go to the dollar store and get a lot of these dividers so that way everything has a place. That's one of my biggest tips is if something has a place, it will stay in that place. It makes it a lot easier to keep things organized. Going through these drawers, I noticed that we had a bunch of stuff that we do not use anymore. I also was tired of having all of my makeup on our counters because it took away a lot of counter space. I did lose a lot of footage, so unfortunately you didn't get to see me put everything back in the drawers, but underneath the cabinets, I put the extra stuff that didn't fit in the drawers underneath here, and they all had a place. I'm so happy to have everything off of our counters, and everything has a place in our drawers. If you're anything like me and absolutely hate the after dinner cleanup, then this is your motivation. Go and get it done. You can thank me later when you've got a nice clean space to wake up to in the morning. Anyway, we had spaghetti bolognese for dinner tonight, so that's me just done the dishes and cleaning the oven there. I am using my shark can tailed hoover for the crumbs. Absolute game changer, by the way. My cleaning combo tonight was the pink stuff paste and the multi-purpose spray. Me also just having a tantrum because I realised I missed a dish to wash. How annoying. Yeah. Anyone spot all these little toes at the dining table when I was wiping it. Then got the good old shark out for a hoover and used the pink stuff floor cleaning spray. At some point today, Cooper managed to get his hands on an eraser daddy, RIP. So yeah, I had to give that all a hoover as well. It was absolutely everywhere. Then I had to deal with this pile of clean washing that's been sat on my sofa that I have been avoiding all day. So yeah, put that away, then gave the couch a quick vacuum and febrezed it. The end is now near, so I just picked up all this crap that was lying around, put the dry clean washing away, and then gave this area a hoover as well and finished off with a wax melt. on spring cleaning must-haves. When was the last time that you vacuumed your mattress? This mattress vacuum eliminates allergens such as dust and mites in seconds. It's quiet and suitable for all fabrics. Clean your favorite shoes, jackets, furniture, carpet with this soft brush. Don't be afraid to throw your delicates into the washer with these mesh bags. They have a wire shape to protect your bra wires. It also helps from your pads being removed. The strong mesh allows for a proper clean. You can just throw these into the washer and dryer. This year, don't forget to clean your blinds. This handheld duster clings onto dust. Perfectly fits your blinds and it's reusable. Clean straws, bottles, and tumblers with 
with this electric brush cleaner. It features two speeds, a ton of different attachments. The silicone material makes it easy to clean. And it includes a stand. No more wet floors with this vacuum and mop. When you push it forward, it vacuums. When you pull it back, it mops and dries. It self-drives itself. Self-cleans. And if you think your floors are clean, give this one a go. All right, let's talk about scratches in a stainless steel sink. This kit includes everything you need to get the scratches out and make it look brand new. This is a before and after. Collect hair, lint, and dust off of your furniture, floors with this lint roller. It features a long, comfortable handle that you can use on the floor or on your couch. The rolls are refillable. Simply tear off the sheet to get it brand new. Day 26 of decluttering my house. Today we're going to start on the front pantry. And I'm pretty sure this is going to make the other pantry look easy because I truly don't know what we're going to find in here. Uh, hopefully it's not as bad as I think it's going to be, but, but I'm pretty sure it could be torturous. I'm just going to focus on this lower level today and basically work my way over and up. You might have seen earlier that I've stored some of the donation stuff that I found in other drawers in here. So I had to pull that all out and then I had to pull out all the other stuff that's in my pantry that sort of belongs, but has been incredibly poorly managed by me, leading to this current disaster. Uh, back in the side, there's a bunch of cleaning supplies like Swiffers and brooms. So I pulled those out and I'll clean up back there as well. There was a surprising amount of stuff back there that I didn't know I had. So that's kind of a win, but like terrible place for a fire extinguisher. That's not gonna help me at all. After I pulled all that stuff out, I wiped face down too because there was a bunch of dog hair and just kind of gross dust. I put the Swiffer and the brooms back and then sorted out what I'm getting rid of from what I'm keeping and there was a lot to get rid of. When I finally did that, I started putting things back in here. For now, this is a pretty empty space, but I suspect I'm going to put stuff in from other shelves. Um, but for now, it looks great. Yay! Certes, il ne faut pas devenir esclave du ménage, mais il ne faut pas non plus laisser la poussière recouvrir nos vies. Voilà pourquoi avec ce compte, je vous partage mon expérience, mes conseils et astuces pour gagner du temps, être performant et ne pas être dépassé par les événements. Ça arrive, mais je trouve ça sympa. Et pour ceux qui ne me connaissent pas, je suis Sarah, experte dans le domaine de la propreté depuis plus de 15 ans. Alors ça peut surprendre de voir autant de ménages en vidéo. Ce fameux ménage, justement, est souvent cause de plaintes et problématiques. Le partage du savoir-faire et les tutos sont donc très utiles dans ce cas-là. Et aujourd'hui, on s'aperçoit même que certaines disputes de couple ou de famille sont dues au ménage. Avec ces vidéos, ce que j'essaye d'illustrer surtout, c'est l'art de bien vivre avec le ménage. Construire des routines autour de tout ce qui se répète. Nettoyer notre toit car nous en avons le choix. On a vraiment le choix d'aimer prendre soin de son toit en effectuant des tâches ménagères. Clairement, personne nous impose de le faire. Et il est prouvé scientifiquement que faire une activité en aimant la pratiquer rend l'effort moins fatigant. Au contraire, si on n'aime pas faire ça et qu'on le fait quand même, de petites heures de ménage peuvent paraître 10 heures. Alors autant l'apprécier et c'est bénéfique pour la santé. Quant à la question des autres participants, sache qu'il n'est rien de ce que nous pouvons faire pour nous qui ne serve en même temps aux autres. Rien de ce que nous pouvons faire pour les autres qui ne nous soit en même temps utile. Abonnez-vous pour en savoir plus. du mal à te motiver pour faire le ménage Tu as tendance à tout laisser s'accumuler Tu n'es pas seul. Prends le temps de t'organiser comme tu le peux. 
je donne aussi plein de conseils qui pourraient t'aider alors n'hésite pas à aller voir. Parfois, regarder quelqu'un nettoyer permet de se motiver. D'autres fois, ce n'est pas suffisant. Le plus important c'est de commencer petit à petit. Et d'aller chercher de l'aide si tu n'y arrives pas. Je t'ai fait un petit cœur pour t'encourager. Le plus simple serait de nettoyer un petit peu tous les jours. Je sais que ce n'est pas toujours facile de trouver le temps, mais ça évite de se sentir dépassé une fois notre jour de repos arrivé. Je ne dis pas qu'il faut tout planifier mais essayer de prendre l'habitude de faire la vaisselle après chaque repas peut être un bon début. Ou encore passer un petit coup sur l'évier après chaque utilisation. Si vous détestez les tâches ménagères, essayez d'écouter un podcast en même temps pour vous changer les idées. C'est une bonne alternative puisque ça permet de faire les deux à la fois. Il y en a pour tous les goûts. Bon, pour ceux qui n'y accrochent pas du tout. Bah je peux rien faire pour vous bande nulle. Je rigole, c'est une blague, je suis à court, d'idées donc balancées dans les comme vos astuces. Intéressant sur le ménage, cette fois-ci une étude nationale montre que les Français passent en moyenne 2h30 par semaine pour l'entretien de la maison. Divise la France en deux, dans le Nord on serait plus maniaque. Et oui, 31% des Bretons et 27% des habitants du Nord nettoient leur habitation tous les jours. En revanche dans le Sud, 28% à vous faire les tâches ménagères une fois tous les 15 jours. Grand écart au niveau des chiffres, peut-être que dans le Nord on passe plus de temps à la maison et dans le Sud plus de temps dehors. Je trouve ça intéressant ou pas J'en profite pour vous poser la question, vous me répondrez en commentaire, d'où venez-vous du coup J Enchaîne avec le quatrième et dernier fait, ça peut-être te donner un peu de motivation. Nettoyer et ranger libère les énergies créatives. Si on y réfléchit, cette théorie est loin d'être absurde. Désencombrer son environnement, et le rendre plus sain et plus agréable à vivre, permet de désencombrer ses pensées et ainsi de libérer les moyens de réflexion. À hasard, si les gens qui cherchent à se reprendre en main commencent par faire le ménage chez eux. C'est en effet un point de départ accessible, fait du bien avec ses résultats immédiats, qui donne clairement de la confiance en soi et de la motivation, démarrer ses nouveaux projets de vie. Pour ça aussi que tu m'entends souvent dire, nettoyer son toit est également prendre soin de soi. Moi, ce que tu penses de tout ça en commentaire, toute la vidéo que tu as vue en fond du nettoyage frigo, tu pourras la retrouver sur ma playlist avec toutes les explications. Comme d'habitude, je compte sur toi pour partager et surtout à t'abonner si ce n'est pas déjà fait. It's day 12 of the spring cleaning challenge. Today we are tackling the walls and everything that touches them in the living room. This may sound really weird, but washing the walls is one of my favorite ways to make my house feel so much cleaner. Especially if you're like me and you have small kids. At least for me, anytime I look really closely at my walls and doors, I can almost always see little fingerprints or tiny splatters of things. Plus your walls in a room make up such a big area. So getting this task done feels like a huge win. So I am just going around and using soap and water and a microfiber cloth to wipe down all of the walls and the doors in this room and then I'm using a duster pad to just get anything that touches the wall so I have this photo ledge in here as well as the tv that I dusted with this surprisingly this actually wasn't too bad I also grouped in the windows and the glass pane of our front door in this task as well which I'm just using a regular glass cleaner to do those our front window never stays clean in our house because our dog likes to sit on the back of our couch and put her nose up against the window as you just saw where she was so this window is something I have to tackle pretty frequently. I hope this gives you guys some motivation to get your spring cleaning done too, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for day 13 of the spring cleaning challenge. In my opinion, dishes are the hardest things to do in the house. It takes so much time and so much effort, especially when you don't have a dishwasher. So I've been asked to do a little bit of cleaning motivation, and I think that if anything needs motivation, it's dishes. So let's jump in. Do your f***ing dishes. Look, it's time to get up off of your lazy ass and do your f***ing dishes, dude. Well, you think I'm f***ing with you? You think this is a game? I promise you, I am not f***ing with you. Your dishes are in there, smelling like a <laughs> rotting <laughs> and I'm not going to put up with it. So get off your f***ing lazy f***ing and wash your 
dishes. Look, I don't even have a dishwasher. You know why? Because wash your f***ing dishes, that's why. Don't you worry your pretty little head about it, none. There are people in dishless countries right now wishing that they had dishes that they could make dirty. And here you are like, I don't want to do my dishes because I don't just do your f***ing dishes. But I hate cleaning out cups and having to put... Look, I'll clean out your with a 14-inch I will spank your with a spatula and you will love it. I'll your all until you bleed dish soap. Do your f***ing dishes. You are now motivated. Later. Vous avez été nombreux à réagir sur cette vidéo. Parmi les commentaires récurrents, on peut noter que beaucoup d'entre vous se sentent dépassés par les tâches ménagères. Voilà donc 4 conseils pour se sentir plus à l'aise avec le ménage, se décharger mentalement. Numéro 1, simpliste mais efficace, les routines quotidiennes de base. Si tu le peux dès le matin avec l'aération, le vidage du lave-vaisselle pour qu'il soit prêt pour la journée, un petit rafraîchissement des WC et une petite panière de linge pour ne pas accumuler. Évite d'être débordé avec des journées machines complètes. Essentiel également, le lit au quotidien. Et on passe au conseil numéro 2. Si un endroit est trop encombré, commence par te munir d'une panière. Ici, si c'est un tiroir mais le principe c'est le même, on vide tout pour pouvoir nettoyer et mettre au clair. Après ça on pourra tranquillement s'occuper de la panière pour trier, ranger, jeter, pouvoir tout réentreposer. Ici le mot d'ordre c'est l'action. L'action justement avec ce troisième conseil qui consiste à agir et ne pas réfléchir. Et bien connu si tu réfléchis trop, tu auras plus de mal à passer à l'action. Pour ça liste les tâches prioritaires et fixe-toi des objectifs atteignables. De petits objectifs pour commencer pour ressentir la satisfaction du fait. Cela provoquera un sentiment de plaisir, stimulant ainsi ton envie de recommencer. Et pour terminer avec le conseil numéro 4, accepter. Accepter qu'une maison qui vit, c'est une maison qui se salit. Accepter donc que les tâches ménagères sont perpétuelles mais nécessaires. On prend soin de son toit comme l'on prend soin de soi. Si vous voulez plus de conseils en commentaire, abonnez-vous pour en apprendre plus. Forty-nine of decluttering my house. And if you like this series, I'd love it if you follow along for the last day of the credenza and whatever else this series holds. Now I know you were just wondering, was that drawer stuck? And yes, the answer was it was absolutely stuck. But with enough shaking and swearing, the drawer opened up, allowing me to pull out several COVID mask boxes, some bouncy balls, a fire stick, balloons, and some Halloween treats. From there, I moved on to the drawer below that had lots of nice linens that I've never used, some Easter eggs that I have used, and a really cool flag that a friend got us. The first thing I did was to collect the Easter eggs and put them in a bag. From there, I was able to put the linens back because I do want to use them someday when, you know, I don't have kids that are disgusting and beautiful white linens aren't a horrible, horrible choice. From there, I put some party stuff and the bouncy balls and the Easter eggs in the kid drawer. Side note, I can't wait to throw some sort of weird, obscure, mismatched party for my kids. And then I took some wine gift bags that we had and I put them in a drawer we did the other day. Let's just make homes for things. After that, I tried to put the COVID mask in a drawer we did the other day. You know the drawer that I labeled the functional drawer? Turns out they don't fit, so I had to move them down to the second drawer, which I thought about also putting some coloring books in, but then I moved them over here. Also, yes, that was a butt on that coloring book. I also decided to give my mom this calligraphy book and then had to go through this Halloween basket. I took most of the chocolate out because it was kind of gross by now, but some of this little stuff my son will be super motivated by, so I decided to keep it and bribe him when necessary. And with that, the credence is done. It's a whole new space, a new entryway, and I'm really happy. Yay! Okay, we leave for a trip in two days. So this is gonna be a little pre-vacation deep clean. Our normal dogs slash house sitters are coming back. So I wanna make sure it's like all nice and clean for them. Also, nothing beats coming back to a clean home. So let's go.
Five things I regret in my kitchen now that spring cleaning has officially begun. We're starting off strong with culprit number one, these white sink baskets. What on earth possessed me to pick out these white sink baskets? I don't know, but they look grimy and dirty all the time. Plus they have a million grooves. Look how gross it is. And no sooner have I cleaned it, this is what happens. Like, why do I even bother? Next up, this beautiful unlacquered brass faucet. I love the patina, don't get me wrong, but it can look dingy after a while, so I like to give it a good shine now and then. But like Chandler Bing said to Monica Geller, you're high maintenance, but I like maintaining you. But if this look bothers you, stay away from unlacquered brass. Now don't get me wrong, I love my kitchen, but nobody tells you that the more grooves and designs you have on your cabinet fronts, the more places dirt and drips get into those nooks. So you'll be on your hands and knees scrubbing all those extra corners. But if you want a dust magnet, put an exposed range hood over your stove. The oil and grease makes a great adhesive for all the dust to stick onto. But yeah, cover your vent hood if you can, trust me. Or else you'll be climbing onto your countertops like I am and uh, cleaning it off every few months. Last but not least, my fridge. Um, I picked out this fridge because it has no handles. Little did I know that this would be a CSI dream. Do you want fingerprints? My fridge has plenty, but nothing a microfiber cloth won't fix. I wonder if a fridge with handles will fare better though. It is a good thing they didn't film salt burn in my shower because Mr. Oliver would have got more than he bargained for down this drain. Although to be fair, he would have deserved it. Anyway, moving on, we are cleaning the living daylights out of my entire bathroom today. Starting with, you guessed it, the drain. If anyone else has this type of drain, then you will know it just gets so disgusting so easily. But one of my New Year's resolutions is to clean it more often, just to spare myself from the torture of cleaning it when it's been too long. If you've ever heard me speak before, there's a good chance you've heard me spit venom towards matte black bathrooms, and my opinion hasn't changed. I still strongly believe they are the worst type of bathroom fixtures to clean but i'm also going to try this year to just clean it more often again to make my life easier i want to have fun i don't want to spend hours cleaning my bathroom in one go so if that means clean enough for every shower so be it and so we are going in today my logic is if i get it all absolutely spotless then it should be easier to keep on top of day by day i know somebody's going to ask so the hoover suction squeegee thingy is a karcher window vac game changer to be honest anyway we are flying through these bits that to be honest get clean quite often so they're pretty easy to whiz through mm, okay maybe i do usually neglect the towel rail but she is having her moment right now. A little dusty dust and wipe, and it is finally time for murder on the dance floor. In other words, I am gonna burn the goddamn dirt in the grout right down. Okay, I'm sorry, that was the final salt burn reference. I'm sure everybody who's seen it wants to move on with their life. I'm really hoping that some of you have made it this far in the video because not only was cleaning the grout hell on earth, but I nearly fainted doing it. I was up, down, left, right on a one woman mission to banish every single speck of dirt from my bathroom floor. It nearly broke me and I'm hanging on by a mere thread, but I'm persevering and steam mopping any remaining pink stuff paste out. I've got nothing left. Welcome back to day 13 of my decluttering series. I took a little bit of a hiatus here because I'm not gonna lie, I got into a it rut. It doesn't matter when you get it done, as long as you get it done. We're all about progress over perfection on this page. Please, I have to pick my dog up whenever I vacuum because he literally hates My desk area has been out of control. I got this filing cabinet to try to fix it. And applying for jobs and freelancing and I was just like, you know what? Clear desk, clear mind, I need to go through this. My dog this. was on top of me this entire time. He was like, I just wanna be involved. So much stuff over here that did not belong, like that purse. Keeping my Emily in Paris phone case, but getting rid of this other and one. And if you don't know, I have a one box in, one box out method. I had a package come in in this box and we're filling it up with things that I'm decluttering. This is my 2023 planner that I barely used, ripping out the stickers and throwing that thing away. And these are all of my wedding cards. Um, does anyone know what I'm I should do I'm taking a filing those? cabinet basically because these drawers are so thin, they just didn't hold much of anything. We all have an old iPhone in a drawer. Rid of these happy holidays from Pittsburgh cards because I haven't lived there in years. Got a little sentimental because I found the last card that my grandpa sent me before he passed away, so obviously I can't get rid all of All these postcards from an old job that I don't know what to the do with. artist is the same as the print that I have above my desk. And this has been a day working at my desk and having that filing cabinet right next to my legs was driving me nuts. I felt so constricted. Pulled it out and I added the wheels and I put it over here. What do you guys think? Like what looks better? Please, I can't just decide. keep getting so frustrated because I need an office like yesterday. My space is so small and I'm doing the best that I can with it, but it it gets annoying. Ordered these clear containers to help organize the drawers and it looks a little bare right now, but that's because I have a lot of junk in my closet that's eventually gonna go into this filing cabinet. Really gotten such a funk this past month, but I'm feeling reinvigorated. I'm turning this into a 2024 reset. Here's everything I'm getting rid of, papers, junk, a whole box. It's January 1st, which means it's day one of my personal declutter challenge. I'm starting with the cup cabinet, which really makes it look like I have a slight cup addiction. 
Besides the fact that I just have too many cups in general, the accessibility of this cabinet just wasn't working for me personally anymore, so I wanted to change the setup. And what you're seeing now is what I took out of that cabinet. I know it's a huge amount. Call me crazy, but I no longer drink coffee, so I wanted to move all of my mugs to the top shelf. I'm not ready to get rid of the mugs yet because I still use them for things like hot cocoa or tea, but I don't do that as frequently, so I figured accessibility-wise, moving them to the top shelf would make the most sense. It had also been a hot minute since I wiped down the shelves in this cabinet, so I figured there's no better time than now. I also took time doing this when I adjusted my shelves to make sure that the cups I wanted to put on there would actually fit. I also feel like organizing is such trial and error. You'll see in this video, I move things around kind of frequently. I put them in one spot and maybe they don't work there, so I shift things around. I feel like there's rarely a time where I organize something and I get it right the first time in a space. And these cups in this spot right here are what I'm going to be donating and getting rid of just to make more space in the cabinet. My plan is to choose one area of my home that is overwhelming me, whether it be a cabinet or a drawer or just a space in general, and just get it decluttered and organized, taking 15 minutes just to do one space a day. I feel like we'll really break everything down and just make it more manageable. I honestly don't know how I ended up with this many cups. Majority of these are just mine. My kids' cups are actually in another area in my kitchen. But now that this is done, this area feels so much better and I can check it off my to-do list. Feel free to come back tomorrow to see what I declutter next. day six of the spring cleaning challenge and today we are tackling the stove top and oven now i really want to know how often do you guys clean your stoves and ovens because i'm really good about cleaning the stove top i feel like i do that quite often but my oven is a completely different story i feel like i honestly forget about it most of the time i feel like the only times i really pay attention to the oven is when it smells like something has like fallen off of a pan or like i'm cooking a pizza and the toppings fell off onto the bottom and then caused a burning smell and at that point, I kind of just scrape up whatever has fallen off and is causing the smell and then move on. But anyway, I started 
started this task by spraying Easy Off, the fume-free one, into the actual oven, and then I'm gonna let that sit. And then I'm using the Barkeeper's Friend Soft Cleanser on the stovetop. And as you guys can see, I have this little scraper tool that I got off of Amazon. I love this thing. I use it for pretty much everything, but my favorite has to be getting things off of the stovetop with it. Next, I am just gonna use regular dish soap to scrub the grates that go in the oven. And then I'm really gonna put some effort into the actual oven. I think my plan moving forward for some of these tasks that I find I feel like I'm not tackling as often as I should is at the start of every season, I'm going to tackle them unless I find I need it more often. So for the door of the oven, I ended up using my scraper here. There was a ton of stuff just kind of stuck on and I ended up just starting with the easy off on this glass and then I went back in with Dawn dish soap and then I'm just using a scrub daddy sponge for the rest of the oven and I am scrubbing and then using a paper towel to clean it all out. And then for the outside, I'm just using a regular antibacterial spray just to wipe everything down. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and I'll see you guys tomorrow for day seven. I'm hosting girls night so that can only mean one thing we need to clean this flat within an inch of its life. Last time I was cleaning before the girls came over somebody asked me why I don't do this every day and why I only do it when guests are coming and I'm like obviously I can't be asked to do this every day. So I think a little dust sitting there is good for the old immune system so I only go full dust busters maybe like once a month or once every two months. That went too fast but absolutely fuming I stopped the camera to go and get my window back and then I completely forgot to film the part where I window back the mirror. I had a lot more free time on my hands when I agreed to host this Brodeo themed girls night but I've been real busy since then so I just ordered a bunch of stuff which you can see scattered on my table. But I've got no real plans so we could very well have a Glasgow Willy Wonka experience on our hands here. And to make matters worse I've been invited out for dinner so off I go. cock a doodle bitches it's the next Day. that is a remote control nothing makes me clean like having guests coming over which is why this is a two-day extravaganza but i will say i'm so much more fired up in the morning the last thing we want is for my friends to know that i live here therefore we are cleaning the living daylights out of my bathroom right now Ooh, window vac is having a moment look at her go this area needs some serious attention by the way i will be back for my bathroom floor but it's just like a little bit wet right now so i'm moving on getting these glue dots from the ceiling from the last time i stuck balloons up scrub a dub dub also i'm gonna get my disinfectant wipes out and disinfect the switches and stuff that my friends could be touching because i'm just thoughtful like that you know no. I've been using the same dust magnet on the flash mop the whole time and my lord Disgusting I cannot believe the audacity of my flat to have that much dirt and dust lurking Given the amount of time I spend cleaning Pretty sure I already vacuumed this bit yesterday But you can never do too much vacuuming Little Miss Steam Up, I love you I haven't sat on my sofa in ages apart from perching my ass on the end there So I'm just redoing this bit and then it looks pretty good to me Ah, gotta get in the gap More mopping and now it's time for me to attempt setting up Goodbye 2024 and I desperately need to declutter and clean my whole entire apartment. If you're new here, I live in a tiny apartment with absolutely no storage and so we are going to dedicate 2024 to decluttering and cleaning until I'm no longer stressed out from the overwhelming amount of things that are in my house that I have nowhere to store. One thing that I have to keep in mind is that I have to take this at my own pace and not overwhelm myself thinking that I can do this every single day and get it done as quickly as possible. I no longer have the same time that I used to before I was a mom and I have to come to the conclusion that it is okay for me to take my time so I am not completely anxious and stressed and honestly end up not doing this at all because of how overwhelmed I get. I'm gonna take this slowly and do this challenge where whenever I have the time and my baby is not needing my attention because of course he comes first I'm gonna do some decluttering, even if that means little by little. And today I worked on this tiny little corner and honestly, I am so proud of myself because this year was a very hard year and cleaning and decluttering was something that I truly had absolutely no capacity to do. And today my mom was in town, so I took some time at night and I decluttered and cleaned this little section to the best of my ability. So here's to 2024 being the year where I no longer allow myself to feel overwhelmed and stressed by my apartment, but instead take small steps to trying to make the space feel more like home and that I can feel peace and excited to be here and I cannot wait. So make sure that you follow along so you don't miss out on all the cleaning and decluttering that I'm going to be doing and of course...
So growing up, my mom always taught me to keep a clean bathroom and that was one of my main chores. So as an adult, I always make sure that my bathroom is clean. I always start with the sink first, then the tub, then the toilet. And I like to use Barkeeper's Friend to scrub the sink. I like to use the Scrub Mommy, but for smaller areas, I use a small detailed brush and these are linked on my Amazon storefront. Then I always use a bathroom cleaner spray to get the countertops. I also use it for the cabinets, my doors, and my walls. And I never get lazy and forget the small little annoying areas to clean if you're gonna clean you might as well just clean it good so after that part is done i move on to the bathtub and i remove everything that's going to be in my way especially everything that's in the bathtub and i always start off by giving my shower a good spray down just so that everything's wet while i clean it i also use the barkeeper's friend to scrub my bathtub and i like to also use this electric brush that i got on amazon just because it kind of does the work for you there are better ones like with longer handles but this is just the one that i have and here's a hack for you whenever you're rinsing out bubbles whether it's from your bathtub your sink always use cold water because bubbles dissolve with cold water not hot water and i always like to give my kids bath toys a good clean because there's so much bacteria and mold buildup and that is disgusting so when the shower is all done i move on to the toilet my least favorite part I start off by giving it a good wipe down with just Clorox or Lysol wipes. And if you're not cleaning this part of your bathroom and wiping it down, please research it and look it up and thank me later. <laughs> then when it comes to the toilet, I like to always start off with a scouring stick to remove any toilet bowl rings. Then I just use this Lysol cleaner. I don't know what it's called, I forget, but it smells really good and it's pink. And I just give the toilet a good scrub down, nothing fancy. And I always like to dry my brush like this. It's a good hack. Then I always will dump out the trash and put a new trash bag in and then that's when I start working on the floor and I just vacuum and smiffer it. Then I wrap it up by laying down a clean bathroom mat. It's time for the New Year's Eve cleaning. Mm -hmm. My house is going to be sparkling going into 2024 and that is how I plan to keep it for the duration of the year. But really, who am I kidding? I only cleaned the house an hour ago and it is already looking like a mess. Me and my mum were speaking about this yesterday saying how do people constantly keep their house clean and tidy? Do you clean it 24-7? Because I need some tips and tricks because as soon as I've cleaned, made a cup of tea, made some food, Odie's ran around, it's dirty again. But anyway, we can pretend that I have have a spotless house 24 7 if you're thinking georgia you sound a bit nasally then yes i woke up with some horrible illness and i do not feel great but we had to get this clean done so i got my new radio on whacked the tunes up and got into my groove of cleaning me and callum bought this sofa before we knew we were getting a puppy and i asked callum the other day would we have got a different sofa if we knew when we bought it that we were going to get a dog of course although you'd think dark would be a good color with dog it picks up on any color of any juices saliva anything else and it's just a nightmare to clean because it's fabric but we're just going to ignore them stains for this clean because i do not have the energy to deep clean the sofa i have never been a big fan of new year's eve i find it so overrated everywhere's so busy everywhere's so expensive everywhere is fully booked what are your thoughts of new year's eve do you love it or do you hate it i intend to be asleep when the new year comes in because to be honest i've not had my eyes open past midnight in i don't even know how long but anyway this clean is now well underway and we moved on to the stairs and at this point i was gasping for air because i physically cannot breathe through those and these cleaning products are not helpful either so we got all them windows open but we made it to the dreaded room the bathroom and to be honest i hardly touched the surfaces but it looks clean from the outside like me the hoover had had enough once we got to the bathroom so the bedrooms were going to have to be neglected unfortunately so to finish the clean i emptied the bathroom bin swapped out the towels made the mirrors look nice and shiny and that was this new year's eve clean done i hope we all have the best end to 2023 and i am so excited for 2024 thanks for watching de-allergize my daughter's room with me. I mean, I'm not 100% sure if that's an actual word, but I'm basically cleaning my daughter's rooms, except I have to spend a little bit of extra time in my oldest room. She suffers from perennial allergies and it has been a battle for a few months. It's affecting her hearing. She has fluid in her ears, um, constant nasal congestion. We've been working with an ENT and her pediatrician and we're still trying to get a handle on things, but I've been trying to do what I can here at home. I've been doing a lot of research on how to control indoor allergens and I found a few products that I'm starting to incorporate in my cleaning routine, so hopefully it helps. We do have dogs, and even though she's not allergic specifically to dogs, they do bring in a lot of grass and pollen on their fur, and so I try to keep them out of her room as much as possible. I was really questioning whether this air purifier was accurate, because as soon as I plugged it in, it said 100% clean air, and I was like, mm, I don't know about that. But as soon as I started dusting in here, it dropped down to 75%. And then it also said 30 minutes to clean air, and 
and within 30 minutes it was back up to 100%. So that's pretty cool. But I basically just washed all her sheets in an allergy specific laundry detergent, dusted all the surfaces I could possibly think of, cleaned her windows, and sprayed everything else down with an anti-allergen fabric spray. I even added purification essential oils to her diffuser and I'm going to run that for a few hours but I'm so dangerously low on that oil. So if you have any other oils that are good for cleansing the air, let me know in the comments. I've even switched back to our big clunky upright vacuum cleaner that likes to trip our breaker every now and then so that's super fun. But I just want to be sure that I'm getting all the possible allergens I can get out of her carpet and it's actually quite a difference what this thing sucks up versus our cordless vacuum. And I've read that removing carpet can really help with allergies too and hopefully that is going to happen this year but we're going to have to redo the entire house so it's going to be a little bit pricey so until then I'll just keep vacuuming and shampooing. And now that I'm completely exhausted from this room I'm going to go half acid in the other room. Just kidding I'm still going to dust and all that fun stuff but I will do her sheets tomorrow not today. And hopefully her air purifier kicks it into high gear because apparently I have not dusted the top of this shelf in quite a while. And somehow I always overestimate how much I can get done before pickup. Hey y'all, clean my sister's postpartum depression room with me. So my sister had a baby this year and becoming a mother is a life-changing event. And sometimes things can get out of control. As a mother of a two-year-old, I remember this feeling. You spend every hour of the day taking care of somebody else and sometimes it gets hard to take care of yourself. So I decided to help my sister clean up because sometimes it's easier to just do instead of asking somebody what they need. It takes a village to raise a baby and to raise a mother. And I love to clean so why not help out? I believe that when your area is clean, it helps out a lot with your headspace. As a member of Clean Talk, I've seen a lot of messy rooms on this app. And you never really know somebody's situation, so it's better not to comment rude negative things. If anything, just spread love. So I started cleaning up how I always do and put all the clothes onto the bed, and then I started picking up all the trash. I moved her makeup table to the wall because I thought that would give more space. Then I started to clean off her makeup table because there was some makeup on her, and then I started putting her makeup up one by one. I honestly feel like there's nothing better than coming home to a clean home. And as you can see, she has a lot of skincare and makeup products in her room. I low-key wanted to take some of that makeup and skincare for myself and think that she wouldn't notice, but honestly, she would probably notice. So then I moved on to her nightstand, and I think I moved that around a few times because I just didn't know where it would be best. I ended up moving the bassinet over and moving her makeup table to the other side next to the mirror that was hung up on the wall. I honestly did not clean under her bed. There was just a bunch of storage bins, so I was going to leave that to her because I wasn't going to go through all of those bins. And the only other thing that I left was her laundry because one thing I do not do is other people's laundry. I'm sorry. And then I moved on to the bassinet, and honestly, she's just like me for real, because why is she using her bassinet as a catch-all? My daughter did not sleep in her bassinet at all, and I just used it as storage, and I can see that my sister did the same thing. Once I got finished putting everything away, I gave it a good vacuum and decided to light a candle. So this is the finished result. I love it, and it looks so much better than before. Alright, see y'all later, bye. Okay friends, it's two weeks until spring starts, so it's time to start spring cleaning. I like to move top to bottom in my house, so I'm starting with the bedrooms first. I start off by removing my sheets and my curtains to go in the wash. I throw away any trash and then I use baking soda and my shampooer to remove any spots on my mattress. Part of my headboard is cloth, so I use my shampooer to wash that as well. Next were my drawers. I started separating my clothes into what I wanted to keep, what is out of season, and what I'm going to donate. And then I vacuum those out and wipe those down as well. I am a clothes hoarder, but I'm working towards that. Now I'm moving on to my nightstand and I'm doing the exact same thing. I wipe down the outside of my nightstand and then I move it to pick up any trash and then vacuum as well. I moved on to my mirror next and I just wiped that down and then sprayed and then wiped the mirror part down. I dusted my light fixtures and my fans. They weren't that dirty because I do this regularly. As well as my blinds. I clean these regularly. I moved on to cleaning my windows. I always have to regularly wipe these down too because I live in the desert and they're always dirty. After that was done, I filled up a bucket of warm water and I added some cleaner to it. And then I use a two-part wet and dry cleaning system to wash the walls. 
I used to just wash my walls with a bucket of water and a rag, but this is so much better. And it leaves the walls giving off a good smelling scent. I also used it to scrub the vents, which makes things so much easier as well. Onto the baseboards. I spray the baseboards down first and then I use this little scrubbing tool to scrub them. I was using a rag, but it wasn't getting in the cracks good enough. You can just see the dirt pouring down the baseboards. And then I just wipe it off. I moved on to the doors, wiping those down, the doorknobs. I wiped the light fixtures down, the wall around the light fixtures, and the frame as well. If you have kids, this is something that needs to be done regularly. After everything was wiped down, I did polish my furniture. This is not necessary, but to me, it makes it look much better. By this time, I was so tired, but I went on to vacuum my whole carpet and make sure I got any last little debris up. And then I use a spot treater to treat the stains on my carpet and I let that sit for 10 minutes. And then lastly, I shampooed my carpet. This shampooer works so good. Look at that water, it's so dirty. And that wraps up day one of spring cleaning. was absolutely one of the hardest longest bathrooms i've ever done for any of my free cleanings now compared to usual this bathroom doesn't look that bad especially since it hasn't been deep cleaned in like 10 years everything's just covered in this almost slimy kind of dust powder but we're gonna get to that i'm starting by cleaning the toilet as usual just in case i have to use it while i'm here i remove everything from the back of the toilet and added some toilet tank cleaner because this baby needed some serious love i coat the entire toilet in an enzyme spray and i use toilet bowl cleaner and a pumice stone on the inside i'll have a separate video coming for this just to show you guys how to get rid of those rings at the bottom the enzyme spray is what's important here since it's specifically formulated to help break down molecules in urine. I promise you it will get rid of that pee smell. I always wipe down everything that is around the toilet as well with the enzyme spray and I do my best to salvage everything I possibly can but unfortunately things like this brush have to go. I did however manage to clean up her books for her which she was so thankful for. Now here's where we come back to that sticky slimy dust I was talking about. I could not figure out what this stuff was. The more I sprayed it the more it turned into this goopy like substance and it took a hard bristle brush just to get any of it up. But thankfully slowly but surely I was getting there and before the comments start rolling in as to 
why they can't do this themselves. This sweet older couple struggle both mentally and physically. She has a lot of medical issues that prevent her from doing much else other than sleeping. And it causes her to feel ill often. While he still works full time to support them almost seven days a week. They finally agreed to seek help after she fell and broke her shoulder. So that's where I came in and that's why I am now on their bathroom floor. Scrubbing and scraping all of these years worth of gunk up. Because if anyone understands how cleaning correlates with mental health, it's me. Now this vanity was the one thing I was so excited for in this bathroom. I knew I would be able to transform it back to its original beauty again. So I removed 10 boxes of expired hair dye from 2014 along with 36 different lotions and shampoos. And that's when I found 15 canisters of cornstarch. I should say empty canisters and we have solved the mystery of what has covered the entire bathroom. It's definitely years worth of buildup. You can tell by the light bulbs it's literally burned on the top of them. And I made sure to rinse off all of the shampoos and the lotion bottles as well as I cleaned up all of the makeup that was salvageable. Because these were obviously things that were once very important to her. Now remember when you were a kid and you would make that oobleck goop stuff out of cornstarch and water? Well, when I say this was one of the hardest bathrooms to clean, this is why. I had to clean all of the surfaces like eight times before it would stop showing up again. Just a layer of white powder coating every time something dried. Now the bathtub needed a lot of love too. This is an area that they don't use often. So I soaked it in my favorite Clorox and went to town with a scrub brush. And you could just see the gunk melting away. Oh, I love when the dirty water drips down the side of the tub. <laughs> Anyways, then I gave it a good rinse to get all the product off, gave it another scrub again and a last rinse before putting in a new non-slip bath mat for them that should really help. I also organized all of her leftover makeup on her vanity for her and I'm gonna go out this week and grab her a few different items to bring the next time I come. And as always, my favorite vanilla Febreze small spaces as a final touch. And after four very long hours and so many rounds of scrubbing and wiping, I got this bathroom nice, clean, and cozy again so they can be comfortable. Now I'm off to my birthday dinner before I'm back again tomorrow with another new free cleaning.